Hi, welcome to the radio workshop and yet a, another video about another communications receiver, the Pi PCR2. There we are. Um, Look at that. I, I, rowing's not a core cool sport, so it's not, not one of the sports that's there every time. But in Lovely piece of kit. I've, I've got it out of its cabinet. I've just been doing a little bit of work on it. Um, there were various versions of this. There's, this is the PCR2. There was, the, I think, the one. PCR3, the PCR, they're all different. There was one that had a loud speaker here. There was a sort of a grill, a metal grill there, circular, with a loud speaker in there. Um, there's a story, I don't know how true it is, the government, Inland Revenue, whoever, decided, I think it was after the war or during or whatever, to put purchase tax on um, domestic radios, you know, the sort of vintage valve radios that we restore. And there was a, a bit of controversy about communications receivers. This is not a domestic radio. This is what the manufacturer said. It's not. It's a communications receiver. And there wasn't this tax on the communications receivers. So there had to be a distinction drawn somewhere. So what uh, the powers that be decided was, if it's got an internal speaker, then it's not a communications receiver, it's a domestic radio. So hence, some of these, I believe obviously the earlier ones, had the speaker in there. The later ones, they redesigned the front panel, did away with the speaker, you put a jack socket here or two, for an external speaker. So it's now not a domestic radio, it's a communications receiver. So it wasn't subject to purchase tax or whatever it was. Now, I don't know, interesting snippet of information. So um, that, I suppose, is why even to this day, communications receivers, um, well, not to this day, there is no purchase tax, but they don't have internal speakers. Uh, there's plenty of room in this one inside. There's, a, there's plenty of room in a lot of communications receivers for speaker, but uh, they're all external. So there we are. Anyway, this one covers long wave, medium wave, and short wave. Short wave is only six megs to 22 megs. Um, there's also a lot of talk I've read all over the internet and various other places about what these were designed for. Uh, some people say it was for use in the sort of canteen in the naffy, just so you could listen to medium wave or you know your short wave stations or whatever while you're having your your food. Um, other people say no, 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 it wasn't produced for that at all. It was. It was for something else, for you know, serious communications. Well, I don't think it was serious communications because the dial, I mean, when you get up here, the, the, the sort of increments is a bit of a guess as to where you are. You've got like 12 megs, 13 megs. It's very tight between you. If you want to listen on, say, 11.345 megs, well, it's going to be a bit of a guess as to where you are there. There's no crystal calibrator. There are no refinements. So... It's a sort of general purpose, I think, communications receiver, loosely called a communications receiver because there's nothing particularly posh about it. Um, it's got an RF amp, mixer oscillator, two IF amplifier valves, uh, detector, audio output. There's not even a, a BFO for uh, you know listening to Morse code. So again, not a communications receiver. Nice piece of kit though. This one I'll show you inside and underneath in a minute. This one's had a mains power supply built into it. Uh, there was a black fronted version. I had one of those decades ago. I've never had one with a built in speaker. The black fronted version. And here there was a thick lead that came out to a huge type of plug and socket arrangement that went into a, a power supply that went next to it. Now that was a vibrator pack to work from a six, uh, 12 volt battery. So these were used from batteries. So that does sort of imply that they were used, I don't know, out in the field somewhere or possibly in a vehicle, I don't know. Perhaps someone can enlighten me. Um, yeah, this one says on the front, quite interesting, it says new 358. Now, I reckon, I don't know what that means, new, 358. As I say, the mains power supply in here looks as if it's it's been professionally fitted. It's not someone, you know, like I did in mine. I, I fitted my own, so it's not a homemade job. That 
that is sort of factory fitted. That's, that's rather a lovely transformer in there. Massive thing, far too big for the job, but there we are, that's the way it was in those days. So, uh, yeah, there we are, you can tune on there, you can lock the tuning. Tone control is a bit odd. I mean, why, why fit a tone low and high? Tone control like that. It's a little bit odd, I don't know why. Uh, no RF gain, aerial trimmer. I mean, all that is is a, a variable capacitor here across the RF section of the tuning gain. Um, so if you if you tune round here, the tracking gets a little bit out. You can peek up the RF section with that. A lot of the communications receiver has has those aerial socket, earth socket, massive things. I mean, anyone think this was a transmitter? Look at that aerial aerial connector there. You pull these out and connect your wires. I saw a program, I think it was BBC program. Um, it's very interesting actually. It was about uh, the wartime and about sort of a farm in Britain. I think it was somewhere near Southampton they did on this farm. And the farmer's wife had been recruited by whoever, some secret sort of army people or whatever and given one of these and he saw this on the telly and this was out in one of her sort of outhouses kind of hidden behind a, a bale of hay and stuff and a, a, an aerial secretly rooted somewhere um, anyway what she had to do sort of seven o'clock every evening was sneak off not even her husband or a family no one knew only her she'd sneak out have a little tune around wherever probably around six meg something like that and receive a message and she'd write this coded message on a bit of paper and uh, then she'd switch off conceal the receiver again behind the bale of hay or whatever and then she'd sneak off I don't know what her husband thought she was up to <laughs> she'd sneak off and to some designated place she'd hide this note like in a tree or under a stone or wherever and then at some other time someone else someone that she didn't know they didn't know her never met really sort of secret clandestine stuff someone else would go and take the note and that is the instructions as to what to do whatever it was um, and they said on the program that uh, that other person could have even been a husband they might have recruited him so he didn't tell her that he was uh, a secret note collector and she didn't tell him that she was a secret shortwave listener every evening taking the messages it was quite an interesting program, but what, what made me interested in it was this was the exact receiver, well the black fronted one I think it was, the exact receiver. So perhaps that's why they were produced, perhaps these were dished out to people that were doing a little bit of sort of clandestine type uh, operations at night. There we are, highly fascinating stuff. Anyway, let's have a look uh, underneath and on top. Right, this is the top view. Hopefully that's, you can see that. This is the RF amp. This is the mixer oscillator, IF, IF. And then here we have detector and uh, audio output. This is rectifier. This is the main transformer I mentioned here that someone's put in. And it looks like a, as I said, like a factory job. It's, it's rather well done and all the wiring um, looks rather professional. So I don't think this is a, a sort of home, home brew type addition to the receiver, but um, fairly basic uh, audio output transformer over there. I don't know what the other one's for. Um, there's the smoothing capacitor. Uh, rather nice. There, there's, I, I haven't found a date on it apart from on the front where it says uh, 5, 1958 or well, 358. But um, there are, this is the, the three section tuning gang variable capacitor down there i don't know whether th these are the dial lights i don't know whether you can see those the two dial lights and down there on that little bracket there are two spare dial light bulbs goodness knows how you're supposed to get them out hidden down there you must have very have small hands to do that so yeah that's the top view rather nice uh, easy to work on and all, all very clean this is a, a really nice example perhaps because it was made in 1958 it was either made in 58 or what that means on the front is that it was it says new I don't know perhaps it was modified perhaps this mains power supply was put in in 1958 but so there we are even the cabinet that the whole thing goes in um, is in very good condition 
Apparently this receiver I read somewhere is based on the receiver section of the 19 set. Uh, so it's a whoever I read, I forget his name, whoever designed the 19 set transmitter receiver in the uh, you know in the 40s uh, went on to design this. This is a modified and an improved version apparently of the 19 set receiver. There we are. I mean the layout's completely different of course but uh, I have to have a look. Perhaps the circuit's more or less the same. But apparently this one this one is a little bit improved. Um, so there we are. I'll show you uh, underneath the chassis now. Right, this is underneath the chassis. This is the rectifier valve, the, the modified, you know, with the mains transformer that's been put in. Here's the valve, new wiring, fairly modern valve base there. I suppose, yeah, uh, late 50s, early 60s. Um, not a lot to see. I haven't changed any of these capacitors as yet. It's like someone's put some smoothing in here, smoothing capacitors. Um, I haven't really done the alignment. I've had a quick check. These are the various coils here. Um, so yeah, that, that's underneath the chassis. Not a lot to see. And as usual with all these receivers, there's a lot of space. I might you haven't said that. There's not a lot of space on top. Um, two jack sockets uh, for the loudspeaker. Don't know why they had two. Perhaps one was for headphones. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've got the manual on this. I'm going to have to find out what what's what here. The, these are the oscillator sections. I've discovered that much. Um, this will be probably mixer um, R RF. Anyway, I've got to sort that out, see what's what there, and just give it a, a quick alignment. Um, not going to go through the IF alignment because that's pretty well. That seems pretty good, and also the the cores are sealed uh, with wax, so they've they've not been touched. So, uh, and also not as it's not a, a sort of a high class sort of professional communications receiver. Um, didn't worry too much about IF alignment. So there we are, that's a, a view under the chassis. Look at this, the old old paper capacitors. One microfarad, 500 volts DC, at 140 degrees Fahrenheit, lovely. Lovely piece of kit. Very heavy as usual, all this steel, very heavy. So okay, that's it, let's have a look at the front again. Right, here we are again with a, a close up of the front front of the radio. This here is where you can lock the dial um, so it doesn't, you can lock that, doesn't move. Um, I'm wondering whether, going back to that TV program, whether because it was possibly, well it would have been someone that knows nothing about radio has to use, it's like the farmer's wife or even the farmer you know nothing about radio, they were probably shown how to use this. Yeah that turns it on, that's the volume control. You tune around here, I don't know, say six megs, find the station and then you can lock the dial. This is the aerial trimmer, they're probably told to twiddle that till you've got maximum noise. Um, and then each each time they want to use the receiver, uh, it's on frequency. Of course these drift, uh, they could just unlock it and then just tune in slightly and then lock the dial again. So uh, yes, so there we are, there's a, a bit of a close up of the front. One thing on this, these this is perspex, not glass. These, I've seen many of these receivers over the years, they, they sort of shatter. They, they stay in one piece, but they look like they've shattered. Um, like all little cracks, like thousands of cracks in them. Someone once told me, a chap who's actually in the know, he once said to me, it's where they've been in the sunlight. That's all it does to this particular type of perspex or, or plastic or whatever it is. So there we are. This is, as I say, a nice example. It's a good one. It's clean not been scratched or, or battered about at all. So uh, that's that's the PCR2 made by Pi. A communications receiver. So that's the Pi PCR2 communications receiver. I'll put it back in its box in a minute. There's, there's, there's its box which is uh, quite nice, not dented, quite clean. So I'm uh, just going to just going to check the alignment, one or two things, perhaps change a few capacitors, see what's going on. Um, just going back to that TV program, 
I, I've remembered, it was quite a while ago, I've remembered a bit more about it. Um, what it was, it was there was this farm near somewhere near Southampton and it was they were trying to get farmers into the war effort that were on the coast uh, so they could look out over the channel, for, I suppose for incoming aircraft, bombers, whatever. Um, and these coded messages uh, were also to do with, uh, the farmers obviously had acres of land, big fields, and they might get a coded message, 11 o'clock tonight, light two rows of bonfires, I remember this on the programme, light two rows of bonfires to look like a landing strip. So, uh, you know, the, the enemy come over the channel and uh, they go by landmarks a lot. Uh, as well as the compass and they'd see like a landing strip and I, I think the idea was they're going to think well where are we we're lost there shouldn't be a landing strip there and these two rows of bonfires and apparently these farmers were doing it all over the place uh, in their fields just you know during the day just set up bonfires and then when they were told a message would come through on the PCR receiver to the the farmer's wife or who perhaps the vicar's wife I don't know in the village <laughs> Then she'd go and hide the note. Um, that would get to the the chaps, whoever they were, that were, uh, you know, the, the farmer had the farmland or whatever, and they lit the bonfires. Anyway, all, all interesting stuff. And uh, maybe in the program they just used one of these, and they didn't didn't know that uh, you yeah, know that was a fact, or or perhaps it was just fiction. But uh, that, that seems pretty good to me. Anyway, I'm now waffling. So there we are, the Pi. Look at that, communications receiver type PCR2. New, 358. I'll have to look into that. So anyway, if anyone's got any info on this, perhaps you'd let me know. Okay, thanks for watching, and uh, see you again soon. Bye-bye for now.